So it looks like Rashad Penny's going to suit up versus the Dallas Cowboys. We also got to hear from Kenneth Gainwell as he explained what happened via the IG incident. Plus, we got a huge injury update. Tyler Steen might just start due to Kelsey's high praise and a great series versus the Commanders. That's not all. Remember, Jalen Carter did say he wanted to kill the Cowboys. Plus, Kevin Byer tells Good Morning Football he's going to pick off Dak Prescott. And last but not least, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown had me cracking up. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. And today, we really got a lot to get into. But before we do that, Eagle Nation, can I ask y'all for a favor? Help your boy out. Hit that like. Subscribe if you are new and turn on that notification bell. Join notification gang. That way you know when we drop these videos, go live or put out YouTube shorts. Let's get into it. So we start with the final injury report and Bradley Roby, of course, is still out with that shoulder. Boston Scott did not practice and he will miss the Cowboys game due to a personal matter. Hopefully everything's okay with him. Prayers in the chat. Now to the limited participants. James Bradbury looks like he'll be a go versus the Cowboys. Grant Calcaterra and Cam Jurgens both were limited, but they're out versus the Cowboys. Now to some good news. Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Sua Opeta, Jack Stahl, and Milton Williams all got full practices. A couple interesting things there due to people who are going to miss time this Sunday versus the Cowboys. Zach Berman laid it out perfectly in a tweet. He said, He's expecting Tyler Steen to start at right guard, look for Albert O to be active at the tight end position, and look for Rashad Penny to be active at running back. We know Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown has had a special connection the last six weeks. Jalen Hurts' numbers are up, and so is A.J. Brown's, but the run game could be the recipe to destroy, I mean, beat the Dallas Cowboys, and it's because of a lot of things, time of possession, and They've been struggling against the run, so could we see DeAndre Swift, Kenny G, and Rashad Penny for the first time all season long? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Let's go back to the injury report real quick. Sua Opeta got a full practice, but for some reason, Zach Berman, who's tied in deep with the Philadelphia Eagles, thinks that right guard Tyler Steen will start. Let's hear what Tyler Steen said about just next man up. You know, we got some, you know, injuries on the O-line and stuff like that. So, um, you know, when there's injuries, we need, you know, other people to step up. So, um, I mean, I'm just trying to do my job. So, Straight to business. I'm just trying to do my job. And he did it well. He impressed Jason Kelsey. Listen what Kelsey had to say. He did a great job. I mean, you know, two-minute situation, not an easy situation to come in. And, you know, underrated part of that, he's also, when you're away, you know, the way we do our silent cadence, he's tapping. So, not only is he going in there for the first live reps, he's tapping, coming back, trying to block a guy one on one. Deron Payne, who's you know, been a pretty good player in the league for a long time. So um, I thought he did great. I mean, I don't think he had one, uh, you know, slip up when he was in there. Um, you know, not getting to a lot of mentally difficult plays. You know, I mean, it's six man protection. You're going to block the three technique. It's not that, you know, complicated. Uh, but physically, he's, he's, he did a lot of great things. Mentally, he's a really smart kid. He's, he's made a lot of progress since he's been here. Um, he's a guy that's had to acclimate to a new position, had to play tackle. He's been coming. We've seen him getting better and better out on the practice field. Um, and, and I think that everybody's really, really happy and excited for him to be able to go out there and play well. And, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, his stock's been on the rise the last few weeks. So he's got a lot of interesting traits, man. Stock rising and a lot of interesting traits said by the one and only Jason Kelsey, a future Hall of Famer. And if Steen does got a start at right guard, at least he got Lane Johnson to the right, Jason Kelsey to the left. Let's take a look at the six snaps that he played in a two-minute drill, and we're going to see what Jason Kelsey was talking about as it pertains to the silent cadence and the fact that Tyler Steen had to tap him prior to the snap. Here we go. First play, they're going to motion gain well. Here is Tyler Steen. You saw him look back and tap. You got a double team block there, a completion. Again, number 56 between Lane and Kelsey. He's going to block one-on-one and help out on the stunt. But you'll see that all these plays, Jalen Hurts had a clean pocket and the silent cadence uh, just getting in there for six snaps on a two-minute drill. He had to do the turnaround 
smack his leg, tap his leg, whatever you want to call it, which ain't easy when you're going against a stud in front of you, right? A couple times he handled his man one-on-one. Look at him, fighting at the point of attack. Kelsey just watching him at that point um, due to the play call. But every play, Jalen Hurts had a pocket to throw from, and the Eagles went down in them six plays with Tyler Steen and delivered. It was also tough, and Tyler Steen talked about it, because it's a two-minute drill, right? You're not going to run the ball. It's pass, 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 pass. So the defense can pin their ears back and get out the quarterback, but he did a great job. So, hey, let me know in the comment section. Suo Opeta, Tyler Steen, who do you think and or want to start versus this Dallas defensive line? Speaking of the Cowboys, Dan Cilio said he has a source who was there at the Cowboys complex saying that the wide receiver group is laughing at the Eagles secondary. I don't necessarily believe this to its T. I'm thinking that the Cowboys are talking about game planning to attack the Eagles secondary because last week it didn't look good. Now, I think we're going to adjust. I think we're going to be better than what we saw last week in Washington. However, I could see the Cowboys going into this game wanting to pass the ball, but are the wide receivers laughing at Darius Big Play Slay and James Bradbury? I don't know. I just don't believe it. I had to touch on it because y'all keep inboxing me the video of him saying it and the actual Jacob Media picture. At the end of the day, we know Dan Cilio does have some sources, but he also likes to rile up Eagle fans and, you know, create a narrative out there. Eagle secondary play bad, right? But I don't think the players were laughing. If they were, they're going to be in for a rude awakening because Sean Desai will adjust. And while we're talking about secondaries, the Cowboys have been good this season. But look at C.D. Lamb's numbers versus A.J. Brown's numbers in October, right? C.D. Lamb all season, 46 catches, 633 yards, and three touchdowns. A.J. Brown in the month of October, 40 catches, 700 yards, and five touchdowns. They're going to have their handfuls with 1K always open. I can see the Dallas defense selling out to stop AJ because he's a monster and he's going for game number seven with a buck 25 plus. And uh, if he does that, then there's no stopping them. However, the run game could hurt the Dallas Cowboys. Goddard can hurt the Dallas Cowboys. Jalen's leg. And let's not forget Devontae Smith. He's been a little quiet, but he does have a touchdown the last time we seen him. The defense lost track of him. Why? Because they were probably paying attention to AJ or something else, and Devontae Smith made him pay. And I could see Slim Reaper eating versus Dallas Cowboys. There's a lot of ways you can attack this defense. It's a good defense, but they're definitely beatable. Let's flip it back to the Eagles defense, right? Because Kevin Byer had something to say. He said to Good Morning Football that he wants to or he hopes to Pick Dak Prescott off again. Obviously, won't be running to the star on this Sunday, but hopefully, I get another pick on Dak, and uh, then you know that'll suffice for sure. Already with three picks in his career versus Dak Prescott, he said to Good Morning Football, "Obviously, I can't run to the star again with it being in Philly, but he looks and hopes to pick off Dak Prescott." And I had a hot take yesterday uh, when we streamed with Cowboys fan talk. Right? If you didn't check that out, go check that out. If you got nothing to do this weekend and you want to talk or listen to some Eagle Cowboys before the game. However, I said I predict a Dak Prescott interception to one Kevin Bayard. I think he's going to play big time for this defense. And you know who else is going to play big time for this defense? Jalen Carter. Remember, he said he wants to kill the Cowboys. What are you expecting out of this first year? I'm ready to turn up, make a big impact to the season, to every game, and you know, I'm ready to kill the Cowboys. Hey, everybody got beef on. I might well join the wave, you know. <laughs> yeah. You heard him. He wants to join the wave. But this was before the season. But listen what else he said. I want to make a big impact to every game. Check. He's been doing that. I didn't show the clip, but a little later that week, he said he wants to be defensive rookie of the year. Check. Right now, he's the front runner for Defensive Rookie of the Year. And last but not least, on his to-do list prior to the season starts is kill the Cowboys. And now he has an opportunity to do that on Sunday at 425. Game of the week, go get a couple sacks, Jalen Carter. Now, earlier we spoke about the running back position and how Rashad Penny could be active due to the personal matter for Boston Scott. I would like to see DeAndre Swift use a little bit more. Rashad Penny have a small role. 
I'm not saying X out Kenneth Gainwell at all, but he got to be better. He did respond to the media on the fact that he decided to respond to a Eagles fan during halftime on IG. The question was asked, do you normally check your phone at halftime? Listen what he had to say. Yeah, I always look at my phone at that time. I either text my, my parents or text my girlfriend. So yeah, it's just a thing I do. And then how did it pop up? Um, just the wrong <laughs> click, and I just like got mad because I was already upset with myself, you know, fumbling right before halftime. So, you know, it's just, it was the heat of the moment. Hey, Kenny, you said you handled it like a man. How did you handle it? With, like, like what did you do kind of behind the scenes with it? Uh, basically just, you know, understanding that it was it was a – Something that you know I shouldn't have done because I'm a public figure and I, you know, take that responsibility. But uh, just taking that, taking the stand for it, and just understanding that you know I gotta be better. Yeah. There you go. One thing I respect about any dude, any player, is admitting their mistakes. The fumble happened. It is what it is. But there were some crucial third downs. Jalen Hurts went to him in the flat, and he got the extra yardage. I think he caught like a 15-yard or 17-yard catch. And the week before that, the spinner Rooney into the touchdown. Listen, we want to see more DeAndre Swift, but when you get your opportunities, Kenny G, just make the most of them. That's all. We know you had a special run in the playoffs, and we not out, 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 but you got to be better than responding to critics on IG at halftime. And we, we know you're going to work on it. We know you're going to be better, and we appreciate you coming out here as a man talking about it. A couple of things. Nick Sirianni showed the team a picture of the late, great Bob Knight, and he had a message for the birds. Nick Sirianni holding up the picture of the late Bob Knight. He was talking to the team about what Bob Knight had to say, and what he said was, the team that makes the fewest mistakes usually wins. So Nick Sirianni looking for the Eagles to have a clean game versus the Dallas Cowboys, and that got to be the utmost important thought for every game. But... In a NFC East showdown where you guys know each other, there's bad blood, you know, j jitters, mistakes happen. But the team with the fewest mistakes, especially in the biggest of games, normally win. Let's just take it back to the Super Bowl a little bit. We were the better team. We had the most yard, but we also made the most mistakes, and that's why we lost. The team with the most mistakes, especially in the biggest games, normally lose. We got to be very, very clean in this game offensively. And it would be nice to take the ball away from the Cowboys, just win their turnover battle. But it would be good to get turnovers and not give up turnovers. I do want to talk to y'all about a couple funny things that I've heard from A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. First, we'll start with A.J. when he was asked by the media about Jalen Hurts confusing him for Julio Jones. Like, what was all that about? AJ Brown called him a fanboy. I think Jalen was just fanboying. Okay. Uh, he'll be okay. Yeah, I, I said it. <laughs> he know that's me. <laughs> uh, yeah, Julio been there a week. <laughs> he didn't think that. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, he'll get mad at me. I don't care. <laughs> that's the relationship they have. He's allowed to say something like that. Much love and respect to their football relationship and off the field relationship. Smitty on the sideline cheering for the defense is a movie. Hey, you good? All right, catch your breath and get your ass back out there now. That's it up now. He literally said to Darius Big Play Slay, yo, yo, you good? You good? When Slay said, yeah, I'm good. I just got the wind knocked out of me. He said, well, catch your breath and get your butt back out there, right? He was also calling some big plays. Prior to the Hassan Reddick big time sack on fourth down, Smitty was asking for somebody to step up, and guess who decided to step up? Hassan Reddick. But I love the energy on the sideline of our offense cheering our defense and our defense cheering our offense. The Eagles just got a bond, and they're going to take that and use that bond, that brotherly love and the brotherly shove to beat the Dallas Cowboys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Eagle Nation. Drop the muscle emoji if you're Philly strong. We all are. And do me a favor, let me know your score prediction. Eagles, Cowboys, this is a football Friday. Of course, we'll talk Saturday. We'll be live Sunday, but on a football Friday, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I honestly don't know if I'm releasing this on Friday or Saturday. It is what it is, but let me know your score prediction. I'll be live Sunday at 4 o'clock. Come through, help your boy by hitting that like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, 
And shout out to the Jersey's winners, Jordy Bennett and JB Warnock. We out.